Is it extreme weather, lack of airports, or something more mysterious? Discover why airplanes avoid Antarctica and why the explanation isn't what you'd expect. Antarctica, a continent cloaked in ice, covering an astonishing 5.5 million square miles. To put that into perspective, that's nearly twice the size of Australia. But for all its size and stark beauty, there's something peculiar about this frozen giant. Despite the fact that airplanes crisscross nearly every corner of the globe, there's one place they almost universally avoid. Antarctica. Why? Is it just about safety? Could it be the biting cold, the unpredictable weather, or the sheer lack of infrastructure? Or could there be something more mysterious lurking beneath? The ice? We've been conditioned to think of modern aviation as unstoppable. Planes fly over the Himalayas, the vast Pacific Ocean, even the frigid Arctic. So what makes Antarctica such a no-go zone? As we unravel this enigma, we'll explore reasons that go far beyond simple geography or logistics. Could Antarctica hold secrets we've yet to uncover? Is there more to its icy silence than meets the eye? Stick around, because the answers will challenge everything you thought you knew about our planet and about the skies we traverse every day. Antarctica is a land of extremes where nature reigns with brutal, unrelenting power. For pilots, the thought of flying over this icy expanse is far from routine. It's a challenge shaped by the continent's unforgiving environment. One of the biggest obstacles? The ferocious winds of the polar jet stream. These winds can reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour creating turbulence that tests even the most advanced aircraft. Couple that with unpredictable weather patterns, where clear skies can turn into blinding snowstorms in minutes, and you've got a recipe for serious aviation risks. And then, there's the cold. Antarctica's average temperatures plunge to a bone-chilling 70 degrees, yay 94 party degrees, in winter. Such extreme cold isn't just uncomfortable. It's a nightmare for machinery. Aircraft engines, hydraulics, and other critical systems are put under immense strain in these conditions. Even modern planes designed for cold weather have limits, and those limits are regularly tested in Antarctica's frozen airspace. But the dangers don't stop in the skies. Down below lies an uninhabitable wilderness with no infrastructure for emergency landings, Imagine facing a sudden engine failure or a fuel shortage in this desolate expanse. Where would you land? And even if you could manage a landing, survival in such extreme conditions would be nearly impossible. Would you risk flying over a place where rescue could take weeks to arrive, assuming it could come at all? The shocking truth is that Antarctica's remoteness isn't just a logistical inconvenience. It's a life-threatening reality. In such an environment, even the best-planned rescue missions face insurmountable odds. For these reasons, most airlines prefer to steer clear of Antarctica altogether. This brutal interplay of nature and geography highlights why the continent remains one of the most formidable frontiers for aviation. But could there be even more to the story? Could other, less visible factors also play a role in keeping planes away? Let's dig deeper. Navigating over Antarctica is like stepping into a technological minefield. The continent's magnetic anomalies create a unique set of challenges that even the most advanced aviation systems struggle to overcome. At the heart of the issue is Antarctica's proximity to the magnetic South Pole, a region where the Earth's Tibritinsi magnetic field becomes wildly distorted. For pilots relying on traditional compasses, this distortion can render navigation instruments unreliable, forcing them to adapt to an environment where even basic orientation is a challenge. Modern aircraft often rely on GPS systems to counteract these issues, but even these can falter in Antarctica. 
The high latitudes of the region mean fewer GPS satellites are visible at any given time, increasing the likelihood of signal interference or loss. It's a situation pilots dread, flying blind over a vast, featureless expanse of ice. Imagine trying to drive your car blindfolded with a broken GPS. How would you know where to turn? Now imagine that scenario thousands of feet in the air, with no roads, no landmarks, and no room for error. In some areas near the South Pole, these challenges are so severe they've earned a chilling nickname, navigation blackouts. In EE, these zones, both magnetic and satellite-based navigation, can become completely unreliable, leaving pilots dependent on backup systems and old-fashioned calculations. How do pilots maintain control when even their technology falters? It takes an extraordinary level of skill, preparation, and sometimes sheer luck to safely navigate these treacherous skies. And for commercial airlines, the risks of such unpredictable conditions far outweigh the benefits of attempting to cross the Antarctic airspace. These navigational nightmares are yet another reason why flying over Antarctica is avoided. But is it just the natural challenges of this icy continent holding aviation back? Or are there more human-centric reasons at play? Let's explore further. While the natural challenges of flying over Antarctica are formidable, the logistical hurdles are just as compelling and perhaps even more decisive. For commercial airlines, every route is carefully calculated to balance safety, efficiency, and cost. Unfortunately for Antarctica, it fails to meet the criteria on all counts. One of the biggest logistical challenges is fuel. Flights over Antarctica would be ultra-long-haul routes, requiring planes to carry massive amounts of fuel to ensure they could traverse the vast, empty expanse with no possibility of refueling. But carrying extra fuel adds weight, which increases consumption, creating a cycle of inefficiency that airlines simply can't afford. Then there's the complete lack of infrastructure. Unlike other remote areas of the world, Antarctica has no operational airports capable of accommodating commercial planes, no refueling stations, and no air traffic control to guide flights. In the event of an emergency, pilots wouldn't even have a safe place to land or access to rescue services. For airlines, these factors make flying over Antarctica an enormous liability. From a financial perspective, the cost-benefit analysis is stark. Airlines design routes to maximize efficiency, connecting hubs in a way that minimizes time and fuel consumption. Antarctica offers none of these advantages. Instead, it represents increased costs, higher risks, and no meaningful reward. Would you buy a plane ticket that came with more risks than benefits? For most travelers and airlines, the answer is a resounding no. The reality is that flying over Antarctica doesn't make economic sense. Most airlines prefer to avoid the headache altogether, opting for routes that are safer, more predictable, and far more cost-effective. But are logistics and nature the only factors keeping airplanes away? Or is there more to the story? Let's dig deeper into the bigger picture. When it comes to flying over Antarctica, nature and logistics aren't the only hurdles. There's also a dense web of international politics to navigate. The Antarctic Treaty of 1959 is a cornerstone of the continent's governance. Signed by multiple nations, it establishes Antarctica as a region dedicated to peace, scientific research, and environmental protection. The treaty bans military activity, resource extraction, and any activity that could harm its pristine ecosystem. But how does this impact aviation? The treaty doesn't explicitly prohibit flying over the continent, but the environmental restrictions it imposes make operating in the region incredibly complex. Airlines must consider the potential environmental impact of an emergency landing or fuel jettisoning, which could violate the treaty's strict regulations. The lack of clear guidelines for commercial aviation only adds to the uncertainty, leaving airlines hesitant to venture into this legal gray area. 
Adding to the challenge is the issue of ownership, or the lack thereof. Unlike the airspace over individual countries, which is tightly monitored and controlled, Antarctica's skies fall into a unique category of no man's land. The continent isn't owned by any single nation, and its airspace isn't governed by a centralized authority. So, who monitors the skies above Antarctica? The answer is complicated, and the lack of a unified system creates yet another layer of difficulty for aviation planning. Could the legal red tape be another reason planes steer clear? Absolutely. Navigating international agreements, environmental, rules, and the lack of governance is enough to deter even the most determined airline. Compared to the clearly defined and regulated airspace of other continents, Antarctica's skies remain an ungoverned frontier, one that few are willing to tackle. This political quagmire is yet another piece of the puzzle. But with so many factors at play, is there one definitive reason why planes avoid Antarctica? Or is it the sum of all these challenges? Let's bring it all together. Antarctica's icy expanse has always been a magnet for wild speculation, and the fact that planes avoid flying over it has only fueled the fire of conspiracy theories. From hidden military bases to secret UFO crash sites, and even the remnants of ancient civilizations, the theories are as bizarre as they are fascinating. But why does this frozen continent, more than any other place on Earth, ignite such curiosity? One of the most enduring sources of intrigue is Admiral Richard Byrd's 1947 Antarctic Expedition. Byrd's accounts of mysterious sightings and unexplainable phenomena have been endlessly interpreted and exaggerated. Some claim he discovered a hidden entrance to an underground world, while others believe his expedition was part of a covert mission to uncover alien technology buried beneath the ice. While historians dismiss these tales as misinterpretations or outright fabrications, they've given rise to a mythology that persists to this day. Could there really be something under the ice that they don't want us to see? It's a tantalizing question, and for many, the absence of regular air traffic over Antarctica only deepens the mystery. After all, if the continent is so vast and uninhabited, why wouldn't planes fly there regularly? This logic feeds into the idea that Antarctica is hiding secrets. Secrets too dangerous or valuable for the public to know. Of course, science and common sense provide more mundane explanations for the lack of air traffic. But that hasn't stopped these theories from thriving. Why? Because the idea of undiscovered mysteries, whether they're alien artifacts or lost civilizations, captures the imagination in ways that cold, hard facts simply can't. Antarctica's harsh and largely unexplored environment only adds to its allure, making it the perfect canvas for speculative storytelling. The truth is, Antarctica's ice does cover a wealth of secrets, but they're far more grounded than the conspiracies suggest. Beneath the ice lie ancient lakes, unique ecosystems, and potential clues about Earth's climate history. These discoveries are remarkable in their own right, proving that even without extraterrestrial intrigue, Antarctica is a treasure trove of the unknown. As we peel back the layers of myth and reality, it becomes clear why the continent remains so enigmatic. But with everything we've uncovered, nature's challenges, logistical barriers, political complexities, and now conspiracy theories, what's the ultimate takeaway? Let's wrap it all up. What if we did fly over Antarctica? It's a tantalizing question that opens up a world of possibilities and challenges. With advancements in aviation technology, the idea of regular flights over the icy continent might not be as far-fetched as it once seemed. Modern planes are more fuel-efficient with longer ranges and better navigation systems than ever before. Could the future of aviation include routes that traverse this frozen wilderness? The potential benefits are certainly intriguing. For certain, long-haul routes, such as flights connecting South America to Australia,
flying over Antarctica could significantly shorten travel times. This would save fuel, reduce costs, and make air travel even more efficient. Beyond commercial benefits, opening up Antarctic airspace could also revolutionize scientific research. Faster access to the continent could lead to more frequent and comprehensive studies, uncovering new insights about Earth's history, climate, and ecosystems. But the risks are just as significant. Increased air traffic over Antarctica would come with environmental consequences, such as potential pollution from emergencies like fuel dumping or crashes. The fragile ecosystem of this pristine region could be at risk, violating the very principles of the Antarctic Treaty. And let's not forget the logistical challenges. Navigational difficulties, harsh weather, and the lack of infrastructure would still pose serious obstacles, even with technological improvements. Are we ready for the next frontier in air travel? Or is it best left untouched? For now, it seems that the risks and challenges outweigh the rewards. But the thought of flying over this last, unconquered piece of Earth is undeniably inspiring. Antarctica represents one of the final frontiers, a place where nature's power still outmatches human ingenuity. Perhaps one day, when technology and environmental stewardship go hand in hand, we'll see the skies above Antarctica open to aviation. Until then, the continent remains a reminder of both the limits and possibilities of human ambition, an untamed expanse guarding its secrets beneath layers of ice. Antarctica, a land of ice, mystery, and unyielding extremes. From its ferocious winds and bone-chilling temperatures to its navigational challenges and complex politics, flying over this vast expanse is far more complicated than it might seem at first glance. Throughout this journey, we've uncovered the environmental, logistical, and political hurdles that make Antarctic airspace a no-go for most airplanes. And yet, for all these practical reasons, the allure of the unknown keeps the mystery alive. Why does Antarctica captivate us so deeply? Perhaps it's because it represents one of the last untouched places on Earth, a frozen wilderness that remains largely beyond human reach. Or maybe it's the unanswered questions, the conspiracy theories, the untapped resources, the secrets buried beneath miles of ice that keep our imaginations soaring. So, is the avoidance of Antarctic airspace really just about safety and logistics? Or could there be something stranger beneath the surface? That's a question only you can answer. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think planes avoid Antarctica purely for practical reasons? Or is there more to the story? And while you're here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world's greatest mysteries. The skies over Antarctica may remain uncharted, but our curiosity knows no bounds.